Rectangular arrays are called so because they are evenly formed. What we actually end up with conceptually is a nice, even rectangle. If you think of a two-dimensional array, for example, as a table, then you can see that you would have exactly the same number of, of columns for every single row, the same number of rows for every single column. That's a rectangular array. Now, to declare the uh, rectangular array, basically what we do is we use a comma character to identify the array rank. And if you remember, what rank means in arrays is the number of dimensions that it contains. So basically, a single dimension array is a simple rectangular array. It's as simple as it gets. It's one dimension. It's a single list, for example, of values. So int x equals new int 10, as an example, is a one-dimensional array. But if I was interested in a two-dimension rectangular array, I could put a comma inside that open and close square bracket after the data type identifier. Now that comma in there basically separates that into two individual elements. And now when we create the array by using the constructor, we'll have to indicate how many elements are going to be in the first dimension, how many elements in the second dimension. If this uh, is a 10 by 10 array, that means I have a total of 100 elements in that array. If I was interested in a three-dimensional array, I would stick in another comma into the uh, data type declaration and then specify the number of elements in that third dimension as well. So in the third example here, I've got basically a cube structure, a three-dimensional array with a total of 1,000 elements, 10 by 10 by 10. Now, to access elements in a multidimensional array, basically we just use that matrix position um, instead of using the individual indexer like we did within a single dimension array. So, for example, let's say I have an array called my array, which is a two dimensional array. And I want to access the element that is specifically at the dimension coordinates 1, 2. By specifying 1, 2 inside the square brackets, I am identifying the array element that comes at the intersection of the second element of the first dimension and the third element of the second dimension, basically. So whatever that value is would be print out to the console using this particular logic and this particular code. Now, rectangular arrays are easy to deal with, but sometimes they may not necessarily represent exactly the type of structure that you're interested in working with. If you want to have uh, arrays that are not really so perfectly formed, you can use what's called a ragged array. Now, the easiest way to think of a ragged array is basically as an array of arrays. And the idea is that the uh, outer dimensions do not necessarily have to be the same size. So I could have an array that contains other arrays, and those contained arrays may all be of different sizes. The way that you create a ragged array, instead of using the comma after the data type identifier, we will just use open and close square brackets for every set of arrays that we wish to store. So in this example, we have a two-dimensional ragged array of integers. Now, you'll notice that when I instantiated that ragged array using that array constructor, I said new int 2, so I know that the first uh, dimension is a two-element dimension, but there's no specific sizing for that second dimension. That's because this is not a rectangular array. That second dimension may be different size for each element of the first dimension. So the first dimension basically has two elements, element 0, element 1. What are those elements? They're arrays. Each of the elements in the first dimension actually represents arrays, which could be of different sizes. So rag array 0 represents the element at point 0 in rag array, or the first dimension that we're storing, and it stores a, an array. There are five elements in that array. The second element is also an array. There are six elements in this array. So you can see that in this particular example, we have a situation where we have a specific number of arrays that we're storing, but each one of those arrays could be of different sizes. Now this is an example of a two-dimension ragged array, but you could actually have multiple dimensions if you wish. That last dimension will be the ragged dimension. In this example, we were using a class called multi-array class that's in the namespace multi-array proj. Once again, we're going to be using the main method to provide the illustration. Now, you'll notice here that I've declared a couple of different arrays. 
My array one is a two-dimension rectangular array. The single comma here identifies the fact that we've got two different dimensions. And then I specifically size those dimensions there after the data type identifier in the constructor. So my array one would be an array of a total of 25 elements. The first dimension is five, the second dimension is five, and then the uh, product of the two is the number of elements. In the second example, it's a three-dimensional array. My array two, in this case, would store uh, the first uh, the dimension of two elements, second dimension of three elements, third dimension of four elements, et cetera. Now what we're going to be doing is taking this first array, my array one, and we're going to be loading data inside the array based on the product of the first element times the second element. So I'm just going to be using a, four, a series of four next loops that go through the elements in the array and then to load them in by calculating the uh, product of x and y values where x is the first element of the array and y is the second element of the array. So basically, whatever the indexers are for the intersection of the array, I'm going to calculate the product of those two integers and then store that value within that point of the array. The reason that I've used nested loops here in this particular case is because the outer loop is going to be looping through the first dimension, the inner loop will be looping through the second dimension. So that way I can actually get the value of both elements and load them into the array at the appropriate intersection point. The second loop is basically going through the array one more time and pulling those values out. So what we're doing here is just printing out to the console x times y is, and then throwing in the value of the array at that particular point. Now let's go ahead and run this and see what our results look like. If we take a look at our results screen, we get probably what we would expect. What we're really looking for here is to make sure that we have the appropriate number of elements at every intersection. 0 times 0 equals 0. 0 times 1 equals 0 also. If we take a look, we have a total number of 5 elements for that first dimension. And they just uh, number right up from 0 to 4 in the second dimension. Then we go back to the first dimension again, start at element 1, and then number from 0 to 4 there as well. You see how we're looping through the array elements. We're basically going through each element of the second dimension for each element of the first dimension. And we seem to be, get accurate, be getting accurate sums here for every step along the way. So what we see here in this example is really just a basic use of a rectangular array. We could also do a similar sort of approach using a ragged array if you, if you wish. 